And then we have the first wowie zowie of the way home. (laughs) Hey everyone, welcome to Girls Gone Hallmark, a Hallmark review podcast. I'm Megan. I'm Wendy. And today begins our recap series of the brand new original series from the Hallmark Channel, The Way Home. Before we jump into this episode, if you'd like to connect with us outside of the podcast, you can do that on Instagram. We are both at Girls Gone Hallmark and at Megan and Wendy. You can also jump into our Facebook group. It's called Girls Gone Hallmark. That's pretty fun there. And you can shoot us emails at meganandwendy at gmail.com. We want to get right into our recap of this episode, but first let's just do a very quick rundown of some of the lead cast members. Okay. Who we'll talk more about as we meet them. Okay. First up, we have Andy McDowell. She plays Dell, the grandma. We have Sadie LaFlamme Snow as Alice. Talk about great. Oh my God. She was so good. Gosh, the eye roll. Oh, I've, as a mother of an almost 15 year old, felt this deeply. Yes. (laughs) We also have Kyler Lee as Cat, the adult cat. Yes. Playing Elliot Augustine, we have Evan Williams. And finally, playing Dad, is it Brady? Is it Brayden Dewan? Al McAdam. McAdam? Mm -hmm. Voice memos, y'all. Send us a voice memo. (laughs) Let's start with a synopsis of season one, episode one of The Way Home. Entitled Mothers and Daughters, Cat and teen daughter Alice move in with estranged grandma, Del. Escaping the tension, Alice explores the farm and finds herself on a surprising journey. Hey, I think that synopsis nails it. It does. Yeah, it definitely does. I have a question for you. Okay. Would you consider time travel to be a science fiction trope? Yes, I would. Oh. Yes, I would. And honestly, like when I saw the previews of this show, when it first came out, I didn't know it was time travel. Mm -hmm. So I got to tell you, I'm a little hesitant Mm -hmm. because I don't like time travel stories. Okay. I don't know why. Because it falls into the sci-fi genre for me. Which Wendy is not a fan of. Not a fan of. But I'm going to put that aside for now. Just because I like where this story is going. All right. So this episode opens with what I feel is a real strong horror movie vibe. Oh, yeah, right? We've got an unidentified woman running through the woods being chased by men with torches. Yeah, in 1814, New Brunswick. I wanted to know, who's that woman? Who are these men? Where is she going? Mm -hmm. And then she leaps over a log, hesitates, and then jumps right in. Yes, let me stop you right there. I swear, and I watched this twice, I swear she says something Mm. before she jumps in, but you... I couldn't hear her, and there was, and of course, no I'm, caption. Ca- I'm watching it I'm with captions. Mm-hmm. There was nothing there. Okay. So I don't know if I'm like making that up, but what did she say? I don't know. I have to imagine we have to come back to this moment at some point, mm-hmm. this 1814 moment. We don't hear anything else about this time period in this episode, but I'm hoping we find out. I assume it's Alice. Oh, but how far back did she go? Is this a relative of Alice? Yeah. Have these women been time traveling this whole time throughout their lifetime? Yeah. Yes. And she's a, it appears to be in pajamas. Some sort of like, yeah, like old timey nightgown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think there's a lot that sets the scene at like the men with the flaming torches yes. and what she's wearing. All kind Very, of- and it touches on it later, but it's very like Scarlet Letter or Salem witch, Salem trials. witch trials. Yeah. yeah. So what, what what's going on here? I don't know. I'm excited to find out more. Same. And we jump straight from there to present day Minnesota. Mm-hmm. We've got a dude with a guitar on stage. We got a nervous looking girl standing off stage. She takes the stage. Yeah. Freaks out. Yeah. And runs off stage. Yes. Well, she sees her dad like texting like he's not paying attention. Uh, you know, but 
But what's funny is that, and again, I'm jumping ahead just a little bit, her, but her mom tells her like, you slayed that last year. So what happened? Why is Alice now freaking out? Because remember the boy comes off the stage or no, she, I'm sorry, Alice comes off the stage, runs off the stage before she pulls the fire alarm. And he says, I knew you were just a one hit wonder. Yeah. So like what happened? Yes. Yeah. When did she lose her mojo? Yeah. I hope we get more backstory and I hope we get the backstory in flashbacks, you know, don't yes. tell me about it. I want to see exposition. It. Yes. Agree. Yes. Yes. Next scene. And I, there's a lot happening in this first episode because there's so much set up. I'm going to tell you right now, I felt like it was done really well. Mm -hmm, me too. Pilots are tough, mm -hmm. but our next scene, we've got what we will come to find out are Alice's parents, Kat and Brayden arguing. And we find out that they are no longer together. We don't find out in this scene that they're not actually divorced. But at one point, the principal refers to Kat as Brayden's wife, and mm -hmm. they both respond ex-wife. So we know that they are not together. And they're kind of playing the blame game a little bit. Totally. We also learn that Kat has recently been fired. Yes, from a job that she loves. Yes. And all in the same scene, we learn that Alice has now been expelled from school for pulling the fire alarm. This no. appears to not be the first incident at school. Yeah, she's kind of a rebel. Or they do say like she's hanging out with a different crowd this yes. year. The dad jokes once once he learns that cat is not working he goes oh it looks like you'll have time for homeschooling and i was like oh i was gonna punch this guy in the face my blood boils right at that moment <laughs> and what we know seconds later in that scene is they don't live together anymore so how is she going to support herself and stay home and not work and homeschool this child yeah i don't know Come on. Yeah. I really had a visceral reaction to, oh, now you can just take this on yourself. Seriously. I, I'm like, no points for this guy already. I mean, the fact that he was like texting during when his daughter comes on stage, like that is a highlight of me to see my kid do something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put I would be away, dude. eyes on. There's yes. no way. Yeah. Oh, made me so mad. In this exchange, we find out that... Rachel, who apparently is his girlfriend, has moved in. Mm -hmm. Now, I was surprised to find out later in this episode that they're not even divorced and he's already moved his new girlfriend. Right. No points from me. They do arrive to what I believe to be Kat's home and Alice is throwing a party. I mean, just right in the middle of the day. <laughs> like, and has the audacity when her parents kick everybody out to go, are you serious right I, now? <laughs> oh my God. This has been like the parent in me with like my head would explode. These people at my home during the day, not giving a care to like music's playing, foods everywhere. I'm assuming they're drinking too. She doesn't even have the good sense to like be worried about being in trouble. She's just angry that they've ruined her fun. It's just like middle fingers up to her parents. Like she does not care. Especially on the heels of committing a crime and getting right. expelled from school. So did are we to assume like she pulled the the fire alarm and then busted out of there? Yes. Because wouldn't she be arrested for something? I don't know. Is it a crime like that to pull a fire? Yes, it is. Oh. And they address that in the conversation with the principal. Oh. And because the mom says it's not a crime, mm. to have, stage fright isn't a crime. And she says, no, but pulling a fire mm. alarm is. Mm, mm, mm. And it comes with a hefty fine as well. Well, I thought the best part of that scene when they arrive home and Alice is having the party is where Kat like looks this dude up and down and is like, really? This guy? <laughs> He's like this full emo looking dude. You yeah, know? the full cliche wrong crowd. Yes. <laughs> yes, totally. 100. And then dad really batting a thousand bales. Dude, I wrote on my notes, GTFO, this guy. <laughs> He's just like, okay, you're going to handle this. I'm out of here. I gotta go Bye. shack up with Rachel now. He's like, I got a busy day at work tomorrow. It's still light outside, dude. Stay here and parent. God, gross. And then Alice and Kat get into it. Yeah. And in this scene, she says to Alice, I'm worried that you are making the same mistakes I made at your age. Mm. And I was like, that's super interesting because I only caught that on the rewatch and we get to it later, but Kat seems like a pretty good kid. Right. So 
what mistakes did she make? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Well, I think Alice's response to that is, oh, now I'm a mistake. So I suspect yeah. that perhaps she got pregnant young. <gasps> oh, maybe. We don't know yet. I don't know. Kat's angry at Alice. I I didn't love her response. Like, why are you throwing your gift away? I feel like in this moment, her daughter clearly had something going on. She had stage fright. She ran off stage and the mom is reacting. She's angry with her for that. Mm-hmm. There's a lot to be angry about. Yeah. But I feel like, you know, that's not, we're not mad at our kid for freaking out on stage. No. No. So that's why I think like something has happened in the past year. Is it just the divorce or the separation? Mm-hmm. Like what's going on? Because obviously Alice wasn't like on track or very much into music or whatever and stop doing that. But because why? Yes. And of course, Alice is mad that her mom wasn't there. Yeah. Next scene, Kat has a glass of wine. She's at a desk and she's opening a letter mm-hmm. from her mother. Asking her to come home with a family photo included. That was weird, right? It felt emotionally manipulative, particularly knowing what we're going to find out about this family. Right. Shortly. Right. And I honestly was shocked that they get right through it. They don't beat her on the bush. Cat calls her mom. I was shocked. I would have like sat on that letter for like two weeks before (laughs) deciding what to do. I like that the story moves forward quickly because I think there would have been more of a like We know that she's in a situation where she needs a job. Mm -hmm. She isn't going to be able to stay here. So she she doesn't have one. And they cut right to it. Yeah. I mean, I guess like if you're feeling desperate, you're going to make desperate decisions, Mm -hmm. right? And Mm -hmm. if that means moving back home. And then we have one of the most, what I thought, beautiful scenes in the episode. We cut to them driving home. Mm -hmm. And we get what might be the opening credit song. Yeah, I'm not sure. It's called Down by the Water by Abigail LaPel. It's a perfect song for this it's show. It's great. It's kind of haunting. It's talking about water. I don't know. Yeah, it talks about daughters. Daughter, and yeah. I think it's it's really gives me like Gilmore Girls vibes mm-hmm. with that opening song. And we get it again in the closing credit. So we will find out if this is in fact. Yeah, because we didn't get like a proper like opening. Correct. So yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see how how it opens next week. And we find out, according to Alice, they're moving to middle of nowhere Canada. It, it looks beautiful to me. It does <laughs> look beautiful. I would love to live on this Big farm. Yeah, but not as a teenager. No, I Being know. Being ripped away from your friends and your school. And there's obviously things going on with your parents yeah. and you're leaving your father. <sighs> but yes, it was gorgeous. If you told me you have to go live here, I'd be like, great, sign me up. Yeah, that's my 47-year-old dream. Yes. Mm. Oh, and then as they're driving into town, we see Welcome to Port Haven. So we know we are back at the scene of the opening of the show. Yes. We also learn in this scene that... Kat has lost her brother. This is a conversation between Kat and Alice. And she, and Alice says something to the effect of, like, I can't believe you were so young when you lost your brother. And it was basically that she's been gone and has been gone for some time. Yes. She does talk about being gone for 20 years. Yeah. Because, you know, Alice is like, if this place is so great, why did it take you 20 years to come? Exactly. Exactly. Annie McDowell greets him at the door. And quite frankly, she's perfection to me in this <laughs> scene. I, I just love her. And what I really love is she asks if they'd like to go on a tour. And Kat's like, I got to get settled in. And she goes, you're not invited. Yeah. And I think there's something really special about a grandparent-grandchild relationship. There's something about taking the element of parental responsibility Mm -hmm. out and grandparents can kind of have that bond with their grandchildren and we'll come to find out that Dell is not without her relationship flaws sure she's not always going to be warm to alice yeah but she does try and draw her in pretty quickly i agree i think andy mcdowell is just fantastic like i just think she's perfect for this role agree love that She's just natural, like her beautiful, like natural gray hair. Oh, great. And she just looks like she has aged beautifully. A thousand percent. I just really, it's just a perfect role for her. It's such a good get. Perfect. Perfect. So while Alice and Della are off on the tour, we see that Kat is 
you know, walking through her childhood home and having like these flashbacks. Mm -hmm. We don't totally see like her or her brother who has passed, but we see like elements of a home that used to be lively Mm -hmm. with younger children. And then she sees like the pictures on the mantle and it's just of Dell. Like there's yeah. nothing there to represent like once was. Yes. Family photos have been replaced. Yeah. Which is, I, we knew this was all coming anyway, because it had been in the like previews for weeks and weeks and weeks of, you know, when Kyler yells at Kyler, when Kat yells at Dell for saying like, you've, there's no pictures here. Mm-hmm. So we knew this was coming. And cut back to grandma and Alice and Alice is surly as hell. When grandma says someday this farm might be hers. And Alice is like, I'm not much of a farmer. Right. Just, <laughs> shh. just be quiet. <laughs> she just, right. you know, you can fully appreciate the teenager in her that she does not know when to shut up. And now it's dinner time. And Del wants to know what they're going to do. She gets right into it. What are you going to do while you're here? And I oh my thought, gosh. they're, you know, the maternal vibe, the take a minute and recover and find your footing wasn't there. Mm-hmm. And I really wanted that for Kat. You wanted her to be like, settle in, figure it out. Yeah, we got you. But no, she's no. like, you're going to get a job? You I get a plan. <laughs> Us Landry women have plans. And she is not on board with Kat's plan to write a book. Yeah, that was kind of funny because I was like, what does Kat have to write about? Are we talking novels? Are we talking like what? Like what? Life on the farm? Or life experience as a reporter? Maybe just because she's a good writer. Yeah, but it- why wouldn't Dell support that, though? Well, I think... Dell's a very practical woman. Okay. And so writing a book, there's not a clear path from beginning to financial success. Okay. You can write a book and you, at the end, you have a book, but you don't necessarily have income. You don't necessarily have a right. job. Right. For her, she wants, you go get a job and now you're going to get a paycheck every two weeks. Yeah. What was that place that she was re- saying that they were hiring? The point. What is the point? I don't know. Is it a restaurant? Oh, I think it's actually. Is it I think where it's they, the cafe where they find Alice later? Because Alice wants to finish out the school year online. <laughs> Dell is not a fan of that plan, <laughs> and not only is she not a fan of that plan, she points at all the reasons why it's not going to work because internet is spotty at the farm. She's going to have to go in town, work at the library, and Alice just gives in. Yeah, I was surprised like how easy she gave in. And she was like, "Fine, I'll start school tomorrow then." Yeah, and good news, Dell has already registered her. This Um, woman works fast. Yes, she does. (laughs) She definitely does. I love how kind of like gruff she is. Like she's not warm and fuzzy. She is not. And it's kind of in contrast because when we later on see some flashback episodes when the, when the kids are younger, doesn't she seem a lot like lighter, lighter? Yeah. Softer around the edges. And knowing what little we know, it's not terribly surprising to me that she's been hardened by life. Exactly. Exactly. We cut to Alice in her mom's old room and she's texting and she's unhappy and she drops her phone and she finds the program from her grandfather's funeral. Yes. Now, did you notice the year that he died? I did not. 1999? 2000. That will be important momentarily i think so i think it's important yes i agree because it's going to establish a timeline of like things that happen and they sure. must have happened pretty quickly yes okay and then we cut back to the kitchen cat and Dell are having a conversation and this is where we discovered that they're not divorced but cat says the separation is at this point permanent because his girlfriend has moved in this is the moment that i was shocked kind mm-hmm. of a dick move to move your girlfriend in before you're even divorced yeah even it seemed like before they were moving forward with divorce proceeding right if they had been separated at that point but then we get some interesting news Dell didn't actually send the letter she seems shocked when cat thanks her for the letter and thought cat reaching out was the first step i was like don't they have like a conversation at all <laughs> like prior to this and i wonder if cat called Dell and was like i need to come home oh maybe she just assumed that Dell knew that it was in response to her letter, right. but Dell just thought she was reaching out. So who sent the letter? Now, Dell does accuse Elliot shortly. Yes. We cut to a scene that I thought was pretty heartbreaking, right. and that is Alice begging her dad to let her come home. And while I think she's been a complete pain in the ass throughout this entire episode, I also do understand that 
she'd want to go home. Yeah. And she wants to be wanted by her dad. She wants her dad to want her to come home. Yeah. really what she wants. Yeah. And he says no. And what would you do in that situation? Hypothetically, if you and your husband were separated and you took your children somewhere and they wanted to go live with dad, would you want dad to support you in taking the children away or would you be mad at dad for not offering up a a place for them? Well, here's where my practical side comes in is there's got to be some sort of like legal (laughs) custody (laughs) situation in place, right? but maybe there isn't. Mm -hmm. This is a hard situation. I don't think I would make a decision in one day. Yeah. Here's another question. They lived in the States in Minnesota. They went to Canada. Don't you gotta like, isn't there something about taking a minor like, out of well, the she country? she wasn't kidnapping her. I know, but... She had her father's permission. Minor, I've yes. taken my minor children to yeah, Canada okay. without their okay. father. Fine. Without my husband. <laughs> without their father. Without father. <laughs> and then we get more flashbacks. Kat and her little brother putting glow-in-the-dark stars on the ceiling. And we still don't know what has happened to Jacob. There's this sweet moment... And she's looking up at the old glow-in-the-dark stars in that bedroom now. Del did not want her sleeping in Jacob's room. Yeah, that didn't go over so well, did it? No. Next morning, you know, Del's kind of spicy as ever. Alice comes downstairs and she's like, don't you want to get dressed? Now, are you a come downstairs in your pajamas kind of household? I, yeah. Yeah, so are we. Honestly, it kind of surprised me because she seems like she's pretty casual. Right? But she had these rules, like, Alice was like, I'm just going to get coffee I don't really do breakfast, you know, because Del's like, eat something too, yeah. you know. <laughs> and then Del plays a trick on Alice, which let's talk about. Okay. She asked her to let the dog out. Yes. Alice lets the dog out and there's a bunch of teenagers working on the farm. Right. And they all kind of look at her and laugh. Yeah. My daughter went to camp this past weekend and uh-huh. when we picked her up, 80% of the kids getting out of the van were in their pajamas. I, I think it's just what kids wear now. <laughs> if I go to high school right now, half of them will be in pajama pants. I think that is just... The, she wasn't naked. I, I know. <laughs> I just think post-2020, for some reason, pajama pants became acceptable wear during the day. Yeah. But what I'm saying is this wouldn't have been humiliating it to wouldn't her. Have, just because she's wearing these like fuzzy rabbit slippers and like whatever. It, she had like smudgy black makeup under her eyes. It she was, was 30 yards away. Yeah. It wasn't like she walked outside naked. Yes. You're right. She You're was right. wearing a bunny costume. <laughs> Yes. I didn't think that that was humiliating, but she's the new girl in town. And I guess that's not the impression she wants to make. Yeah. But maybe we're, we're making this as a perspective of our age. And if my daughter would probably be mortified if I sent her outside and there were boys and girls. Yes. And she was, not that's her first impression. Yeah. She would. Sure. Yeah. She wouldn't like that. So I mean, I can see it from both ways. I kind of. Like, I know Del thinks it's funny. She's like, oh, that'll teach you not to get dressed before breakfast. I thought I was just kind of mean. Because clearly that was her intent. Yes. Yes, but why? Why do that to your granddaughter? Like, what was she, what was her point there? Yeah, to prove to her that that's why you need to get dressed. It just seems The rules of the farm cruel. exist. For, I thought so, too. Cool, cruel. Well, a cat enjoyed it. Yeah. Okay. You know, I get it. She's also in a place where her daughter's been reading her the riot act every totally. night. So, you know, to see her daughter get a little bit of a taste of her own medicine. Mm-hmm. Next up, we've got Kat making some disappointed phone calls to editors who are not as interested in her book as she once believed they might be. That's why I'm wondering, like, what is the story here? Like, she had a book idea that was exciting at one point and then didn't do it. I don't know. I think she is in the world and she meets people and they, you know, she says, someday I'd like to write a book. And they say, I'd love to talk about that when the time comes. As a throwaway comment. Yeah. And whether they're actually in the market for whatever type of book she would write at the time, clearly they are not. Yeah. She's going to have to get a job at the point. <laughs> she is. So waiting tables. I had, I had a timeline question. Okay. Because Del goes outside. <laughs> and my notes say, Del confronts Clark Kent about mailing a letter. Clark Kent. <laughs> another, another glasses. A character wearing glasses. Yeah. So it's Elliot Augustine, longtime family friend. It appears that maybe he's supervising this high school program where the students volunteer on the farm before school. What time is it? It's like 6 a.m., man. So first of all, a lot happens. I believe that he says he didn't send the letter. Mm-hmm. 
whether he was lying or genuinely unclear about who sent the letter. But he says it wasn't me. I think it was him. Okay. Only because I... Maybe he just says, I don't know what you're talking about. Because I, in his adult life, he knows that Alice is going to return. Yes. So he had to send the letter to get her there. I don't know. Yes. Good point. Good point. I, I know. Spoiler alert. Skipping ahead. Elliot and Kat are reacquainted. And yeah. mom says, oh, you have a lot in common with your divorces and all. Oh my God. So shady. <laughs> you're both single. Shade. <laughs> Kat. And Elliot chat for a minute. And then uh, apparently Alice is all of a sudden Miss Conscientious about getting to school oh, yeah. on time. And she barrels out the door and is like, Mom, we got to go. Yeah. I got to say my own 15-year-old is does the same thing. Mine does too. You know, he takes his time, takes his time, takes his time. And then all of a sudden he's like, yeah. Mom, Everybody's are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> I'm the one that's been holding up the <laughs> Yeah, the, the whole process. And my question is, if yeah. Alice is leaving for school in that moment, why is it Mr. Augustine already at school? <laughs> I know. I know. It's it's kind of messy here. Yeah. The if, teachers need to get to school the same yeah. before the like, students. Well, don't the other students who are working in the farm, don't they need to get to school too? Right. So I did see that Elliot, he has a peculiar reaction to Alice seeing her. I think mm. this is his first time that he sees her or that we see that he sees her. Okay. There's something weird there. We'll see. Okay. She does meet a few of the farm teens at school. They seem like nice kids. They seem like these are potential friends of hers. Yeah, I hope so. Now Kat and Brayden are yelling at each other. Mm -hmm. And Kat is super mad that he turned Alice down. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of surprised by that because I don't think there's any way he could have done the right thing in this moment. Yeah. He either says, come home. And now she's like, what are you doing to me? Right. Or he's breaking their daughter's heart. Right. So damned if you do here. I, I do feel that... He did empathize with Kat's return at home. Like he understood, I mean, they were like teenage loves, right? Mm -hmm. So he, he knew Dell at one time or he knew what their home was like at one time and the tragedy that unfolds. And he, so he feels empathy for her that she's back there and having to deal with that. Yeah. And she tells dad and Jacob have been erased from the house yeah. and how weird it is. But he had a... He was on such a jerk. A moment of redemption. Yes. Agreed. And we find out Dell's keeping bees. And this is my favorite line of the entire episode when Kat's like, why did you change the house? It's like an Airbnb in there. Right. And I thought like the shells on the tray. Yes. I totally agree. <laughs> and Dell spins it right back on Kat. She's like, you're floundering. And Kat's like, of course I'm floundering. You erased my life. It's kind of sad. Yeah. It's really sad. And I thought... Again, where is the warm, fuzzy mom? Like, yes, I'm floundering. My marriage has ended. I've had to uproot my life and move back home because I've lost my job. It's very clear that I'm floundering. And I come back home, a place that is supposed to feel welcoming and warm and like home. Yes. And it doesn't feel like that. I just think that some people are not capable of that. Yeah. So again, wants me to know more about what happened to Dell. Yes. Like, of course, something has hardened her up over the years. Yeah, she has healing to do. Yeah. She's obviously had some trauma, too. Yes. Yeah. And then, shocker, Alice is in Mr. Augustine's classroom, and he offers to talk to her any place, any time. Yeah. And my daughter and I are watching this together, and I go, eh, eh, you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> and then these all real shitty classmates... Oh, is it getting hot in here? And they pretend to pull the fire alarm. Yeah, dumb. That's not even funny. It's not. Then it's time for a creepy basement. That was kind of scary. When was the last time anybody was in here? Lamps are on their side. It's a full mess. <laughs> kind of surprised Dell kept the basement in such a disarray. Yeah. It was kind of funny because Kat pulls out like... Jacob's one box of memories. It's like, just like one cardboard box. Jacob. She was going through that, but she was just looking at like, there was like a box and a ball. And we, we get to that little mysterious box later on. Yeah. A little tin that he's going to yes. use for his treasures. Yes. And we see a flashback of her dad and Jacob fixing a clock together. A real sweet moment. And then we find out. Miss Alice skipped school. Peaced out. Yeah. Well, I probably would have too. Like that was probably it for her. Like the kids making fun of her. She's like, I'm out of here. I'm not doing this. Yeah. So she's been spotted at the Point Cafe and in comes mom. Yeah. I really love that because... Alice is sitting at a table and she's watching a birthday video of herself and she has these huge like beats 
headphones yeah, on, yeah. right? Like, which like was, AirPod Maxes. It was, is that what they were? Uh, I don't know, but big headphones. Huge headphones. And I was kind of like, would a 15 year old really? Oh, let me tell you, the AirPod Max is very popular. Um, okay. Very. $600 headphones. Oh my gosh. So anyway, the mom's like, headphones off. And I was like, <laughs> yes, cat. <laughs> You, you can tell who we relate to in this show. Right. And she's mad that Alice hasn't given it a chance. And we see them back at home arguing about Alice moving home. And in a real dick move, I think, Kat tells Alice that Rachel has moved in. You think that's a dick move because it's not appropriate for the mom to tell the daughter? I think she was kind of trying to hurt her daughter a little bit. Oh, you think so? It felt like it. She was like, you can't move home because Rachel has moved in. Like, Rachel Uh, has taken your place. And I guess the question here is, if this is her dad's new girlfriend, if he's moved in, things are serious, at some point, Kat and Rachel are going to have to coexist. They're going to have to live together at some point, or at least have a... Like a Some life sort of, that overlaps. Yeah. 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 But to me, it felt like her mom wasn't getting through to Alice and she wanted to land a blow. I think that's fair. I also think perhaps she could be like, she needs Alice on her team. Yeah. And let's be mad at dad together. Uh huh. Uh huh. And this yeah. is the reason why. Yeah. But I don't know. Alice runs into the woods, throws the bracelet that we know her mother had given her into the pond and then pretty much instantly regrets it yeah right Mm -hmm. she chucks it in and then she walks out to onto the step or the rock whatever it is and like she's looking 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 and i gotta say like they made the pond look really kind of not desirable to swim in right murky murky and even del has says earlier in the episode that she's like it's more of like a sinkhole than it is a pond Uh you know there's like stuff floating on it and whatever would you ever just jump into a pond no i don't know what's in there no absolutely not anyway so she's like reaching in this this is the part that's a little bit unbelievable to me she's like reaching reaching the bracelet has sunk it's not going to be floating on the (laughs) top right right? and then all of a sudden she falls in head head over feet you know yeah and the seaweed gets her and which looked like fern (laughs) you know what i'm talking about yeah yeah, yeah. the fern is wrapping her up in her legs and she's flailing underwater with the big eyes and she's you know, panicking, I guess. And then a hand reaches out, pulls her out of the water and it's cat. Yeah. Young cat. Yes. And back to present day, we've got cat and Elliot talking in the kitchen and can't, can't believe the old Alice isn't back. And at this point I yelled at my TV after one night cat, she thought bringing her back home would bring the old Alice back. It's going to take a minute. Yeah. I mean, Lower your expectations. Mm-hmm. Can Elliot like reference a song? They reference Everybody's Free by Rosala, the spoken word hit of the 90s. I don't even know that song. Well, hold on. It's from 1992. Oof, I was a sophomore in high school, guys. I was a sixth grader. Shut <laughs> up. What a weird song to reference. I know. There were some 90s deep cuts in this episode. That is a weird one to me. I think so, too. Yeah. I think a better song reference there would have been, like, some sort of R.E.M. song. Like, Everybody Hurts Sometime. You know what I'm talking about? That R.E.M. song? I I don't know. Everybody Hurts. We cut back. Young Cat and Alice are walking. Alice is soaking wet. And Baby Elliot pops his head out of the top window of what I believe is a barn. Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, they meet Elliot, her best friend. And then we have the first wowie zowie of the way home. (laughs) Actually, that's not true because I actually think adult Elliot is quite a cutie. I I agree, but there is something about Colton. But Colton turns around with the cutest smile I've ever seen. And man, is Jefferson Brown hot or what? Yeah, we did a little dive on him today. Jefferson Brown, 47 years old. Yep, age appropriate. (laughs) Super (laughs) cute. (laughs) So handsome. I'm like, whoa. And I think he's the perfect actor for this because what I'm guessing is like he was the real heart of that home. Like there just Probably, was like yeah. warmth emanating from this actor on screen. Uh, like, oh, they, they have such a nice family. God, I just hope we get more of him. I know. In flashbacks. You know, I just hope like it's not just to establish like the story. I 
in this episode. I hope we get more of him. I think we will. I think we will. Okay. And then Alice enters young Kat's bedroom, glances at the calendar, and that's when we learn that it is 1999. Yes. And this is why it is important that that program said 2000. We don't have a lot of time to work with here. Right. It's kind of interesting. Something has to go bad. Alice knows that her grandfather passes away and she probably knew when he passed away. I'm wondering when she's going to make the connection of how little time she has left in this past before she loses him. Right. And did was it established if Jacob died before Colton? Not that I'm aware of. Mm. Or if they died at the same time. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think so based on the conversation that happens later, but let's Let's get back to it. Okay. This was one of my favorite scenes because young cat is getting some clothes for Alice to change into. And she says something about her, like clothes, not being great or whatever. And Alice says, it's okay. The nineties are totally back in style anyway. Yeah. And Kat's like, what? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> well, I picked up on that too. But what I loved about that scene is earlier when Alice is leaving the house, she's like, I don't even know what to wear to school. I hate everything I own. And then Kat basically says the exact same thing. Yeah. She's like, here, I hate everything I own. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's pretty typical of 15 year old girls. Sure, of course. Of course. Of course. 43 year old women. <laughs> yes. Do we ever grow out of that? I don't know. And then we see Dell at the kitchen table with young Jacob looking at his Polaroids and telling them that he has a beautiful eye for photography. Mm-hmm. Foreshadowing. Laying the groundwork there. And then we get Alice in a baby doll dress. Yes. Yes. We're going to have a little bit more to talk about that baby doll dress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the end in our new segment noticed in the 90s noticed in the 90s so we're at the dinner table it's kind of crazy because we're in the same home we're in the same it's the same dinner Mm -hmm, situation mm -hmm. and it's very lively and fun and and you know they're talking and they're talking about cat getting a job at the camp and of course she has to go because you never know who she's gonna meet of course that's where she meets her future husband do we then go to the scene in in present day? Yes, we do. Because then we go back to this thing. Yes. So now we got Kat and Dell at the kitchen table in present day. Right. And this this is what's wild to me is because we, it's, we're comparing and contrasting like the scene. It takes place in the same place. Yes. And one is lively and full of life. And mm-hmm. I guess those two things mean the same. And then we have like, it, it's almost like the coloring of it is even like darker. Yeah. And she's sitting in the same chair, Dell. Yes. Also, side note, I had read an article from Andy McDowell and she said that she was a little bit worried about shooting the scenes with her. She's wearing a wig mm. in those scenes and she was a little bit worried because she's like my her neck was going to give away her age. Oh, interesting. And she's like but luckily like the director shot it with like kind of like an out of focus uh-huh. like, you know, filter or whatever and I was like, "Oh god, I feel your pain with this neck I situation." Do too. So I do too. Your age. But that's how I remember Andy McDowell with like this dark curly hair. Yeah, you know? she looks great, Gray. I, I, either way, she looks great. She's so gorgeous. One thing I really noticed in this scene is Dell is calm and Kat's freaking out because mm-hmm. Alice is missing. And Dell says she'll be fine. And Kat says, "Well, Jacob wasn't." Ouch! That's below the belt. Yeah. Don't you think so? So that leads me to believe there was an accident. Mm. Yeah. I hope he didn't drown in the pond yeah. looking for the white witch foreshadowing oh my goodness back to 1999 dad's playing guitar and is this where alice gets her musical talent from oh my gosh a voice of an angel singing along with colton they were singing better be home soon by crowded house i mean that is a 90s i don't i'm not familiar with that song but crowded house a 90s staple yeah i thought it was really sweet because you know she like apologizes for singing along and i from the perspective of a parent I loved the idea of like any of my kids' friends feeling that comfortable in our house. Oh my God, totally. Like to be that part of the moment. Mm-hmm. I don't, there's no parent that wouldn't like love that mm-hmm. moment. And then Colton says, never apologize for talent. Now, here's what's interesting to me mm-hmm. uh, Alice is going to go home, and, and Dell's like, oh, Colton will walk you. And she's like, no, 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 I'll be fine. And they just like give it up. Yeah. Because always you just got to go jump back in the pond. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but first, Jake takes Polaroid. Yes. But wait, he did. He does mention the White Witch. Did you not catch that part? 
I did. So Jacob says to her, like, oh, don't let the white witch get you on the way home. And Del says, oh, she There'll has plenty be time of time to for learn folklore. The local lore. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, obviously, he's referring to like this lore of this girl being chased and jumping into the pond. Who maybe then drowned there? Perhaps. We don't know. Is she haunting people? So many unanswered questions. As Alice leaves, she looks back into the window, and it's a very sweet family tableau that she looks upon. Tableau. <laughs> There's that word. Anyway, we did mention that Jacob takes a picture, right? Jacob takes a Polaroid. Yeah, we yes. did. And we see Kat back in present day calling Alice, leaving her a message, begging her to come home. Here's my issue with that scene. What? No teen listens to their voicemail. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm not even sure my son has an outgoing message set up on his. She doesn't have Life 360 on there where she can, like, find mm-hmm. find my phone, find right. my friends, <laughs> something where she can locate her excellent daughter. Point, an point. Apple AirTag on this girl who's obviously been in trouble the last year. <laughs> like, something to find her. I, I just think, like, they're living in a different lifestyle. Like, out in this farm, like, you, she'll be home when she gets home. Nothing bad happens here, mm-hmm. you know? But I don't... I don't think she feels that way. She's I don't clearly believe. freaked out. Cat doesn't feel that way. Yeah. Yeah. And then Cat opens Jacob's jar of treasures and finds a stack of photos. And this is the moment I thought we've lost Wendy. <laughs> no, 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 no. You didn't. I I I was like, <gasps> it's a real Marty McFly moment. Totally exa- oh, a thousand percent. Yeah. I'm I was into it. I was super into it. She flips through the photos and of course she sees the one that he took with Alice in it and there's something blocking her so she can't see her face, but you do see her dress. Yes. So I'm wondering, like, does Kat have memory of this? this event pulling this girl alice yeah. out of the water like this is where time travel gets real sticky for uh-huh. me yeah right because it hadn't happened but of course it had already happened elliot remembers her yes and elliot says don't worry alice will find her way home yes this is when we now see alice climbing up into the barn to go talk to elliot and she's like i need your help yeah and he's like what We've just met. Uh-huh. What are you talking about? And she's like, you got to trust me. You told me you'd help me anytime, any place. I need you to help me right now. The next scene, Down by the Water is playing over adult Elliot, waiting for Cap to return to the yeah. present day. Yeah. Yeah. And now we have to wait a whole week for That's another it. episode. I know. I was, there was part of me that was like, oh my God, I wish this was a two hour premiere. I wish I could binge watch all of these. Like, yeah. it hooked me. It hooked me good. Me too. We've definitely watched shows where at the end you're like, mm, but I'll give it another yeah. one or two to see if I get into it. I did not feel like that at the end of this. We have a couple recurring segments that we're going to include in these episodes. I'm excited about these. First is Noticed in the 90s. Yes, ma'am. We don't spend a lot of time in the 90s in this episode, but I would say, what was the standout It was the baby doll dress. thousand percent. It was the baby doll dress. We had to do a little... Googling. I mean, I was in the 90s. I graduated high school in 1993. I remember wearing a baby doll dress myself in 1994, around that time. Yes. So they're saying this is 1999, and I don't think the baby doll dress was that popular. No, a little research told us that the baby doll dress was a little more popular in the early part of the century. But I will say, as a fashion statement of the 90s, Mm. I do think it's maybe the most standout yeah. piece because a lot of what we have, you know, 1999, the look of 1999 is like black pants. Yeah. Anybody who was a young adult in 1999 knows what that means. Like, yes. what are you wearing? Black pants. Yeah. And probably like big black sandals with it too. Uh-huh. <laughs> and a, a going out top. Black oh pants God. and a cute top was an outfit and that's how you would describe it. I don't think that translates as well because on screen it just looks like a very basic outfit. Right. And I think a lot of what else was popular at this time, you know, like cropped tops and adidas style sweatpants Uh i think the baby doll dress is more of a look yeah that communicates 90s i did think it was interesting and i didn't talk about this in that moment because i knew we were coming to it if you were going to borrow clothes from someone wouldn't it just be like a a a t-shirt yeah Yeah, you wouldn't like give me a full outfit (laughs) but again they were trying to make that 90s statement Next up, every week we're going to crown a homie of the week. Homie of the week. During the premiere of this 
episode, Hallmark was like in their Instagram stories trying to come up with a name for their fans. Uh huh. Did you see any of it? I didn't, but are they calling them homies? Homies was a an option. Ponders? No. Veto. Was another. Ponderers? No. Was another. And there was one more. Hallmark Channel. Unofficial poll for a name for the way home Hallmarkies. Homies, Ponders, Ponderers, and Waders. W A Y D E R S with the double entendre there because you wade into a pond. Yeah, I don't like that one either. I mean, uh, Homies is a clear choice, right? A Hallmark response, Way Homies, has also been suggested. Homies was the clear winner with 50% of the vote. <laughs> so we named this segment prior to the airing of this episode. We're going with homie of the week. Yeah. Because I feel like there was so much set up in this episode. I think there's there's potential for every single person. Mm-hmm. But the person who grabbed us yeah. is Jefferson Brown for his cutie cutie smile. Dad Colton. Yeah. Man, when he turned around. Seriously. I know. I know. I know. I thought it was just me. I was like, am I into old dudes? <laughs> old dudes? He's my age. I know. <laughs> And in the episode, he's the father of a teenager and like an eight-year-old. So he's age our age. He's our age. I know. I know. It's just weird. I'm in my own weird time travel. Like I can't, you know, I don't, yeah, he's nice to look at. Yeah. Colton is our homie of the week. That wraps up our recap of episode one, the pilot episode, Mothers and Daughters of The Way Home. We will be recapping The Way Home every Wednesday. We believe we've got a 10 episode season coming at us. So prepare for that for the next 10 weeks. Of course, every Tuesday, you can listen to our Hallmark movie reviews. We'll be back next week with The Wedding Veil Journey. And episode two of The Way Home. Until then, hop into our Facebook group, Girls Gone Hallmark, and let us know what you think. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.